Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be filming a little tutorial, but I'm going to be using some of my old favorite products. If you've been with me since then, you'll be familiar with a lot of these products and I have not used a lot of these products in a very long time. So it was really nice to go down memory lane and just sort of rediscover my love for all of these products. So it's a really fun video. I hope you guys will enjoy it. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and hop into the tutorial. All right. So to start off, I'm going to go in with my foundation and I'm going to go back to the Urban Decay All Nighter Liquid Foundation. I used to be obsessed with this stuff. I mentioned this first in my 2017 favorites. For some reason, I skipped over 2018 and jumped into 2019. This was also a favorite last year as well. I just didn't really use it as much because I think for a lot of us in 2020, we did step down from the full coverage. I'll just do one pump. This foundation is just seriously so good the coverage that it gives flawless and it just photographs and on video as well it looks really really good um so that's why i used to always wear this foundation it was like the only foundation i would wear and also this is my second one so in 2017 i had this one and then i finished it and then i repurchased it so you know it's like a favorite so we'll use my sponge to blend in because that's what we usually do. It is going to be, I think, a little dark and yellowy for me. That's the only thing I don't like about the shade that I have is number four, is that it is a little bit too yellow on me, but I think once I have like concealer in, we can make it work. And the finish is a little bit more onto the matte side. It's been a while since I've used something so matte. I'm like falling in love all over again with this foundation. I mean, it's still one of my favorites. I will still consider it to be a holy grail item. It's just, honestly, I have not used it as much, really. With me focusing on my foundation and my project pan, and me loving my daydream cushion, and my pretty fresh tinted moisturizer, I just stopped using this, but maybe I need to get back into this again. So now onto concealer. I actually don't have like an old favorite because my favorite has been the same for the past four years. And that concealer is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in the shade Almond. This is my second bottle as well. It's been my favorite for the past couple of years. And although I've tried a couple of other concealers, I just don't think anything else works as great as this one. So I'm just gonna go into this. I will say that my technique with concealer has changed. I used to go in with so much of this, um, but now I just use a little and because I have full coverage foundation on, I like don't think I really need a lot. Like that, that foundation just covered everything really. Well, in a sense, I haven't really used this concealer as much recently because I do have a different concealer in my project pan. And also I've been testing out the new Kosos primer, uh, not primer, Kosos concealer. And I've been liking that one actually, but it's not as great as my Too Faced one coverage wise. So I've been loving this one for so long. And I was looking back to my old um, favorites videos and a lot of the products are still the same so it was sort of hard to find old products that haven't expired or I still have in my collection because I might have decluttered it this, these are the products I still have in my collection so I guess that just kind of shows you that it is truly a favorite I did have a lot of wet and wild favorites but um, the news came out about Wet n Wild you know selling in China so I did stop buying from them and I did give away all of my um, Wet n Wild products. And same thing for powders. I haven't had like a holy grail old favorite that I still have because I actually only have two powders in my collection. The Laura Mercier one that's in my project pan and then this one I literally just picked up last week. It's the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, so I thought I would just use this today. It would be my second time using it. Personally, for me, I don't buy a lot of powders. I typically only have one in my collection, and then I'll use that up, and then I would buy another one. I'm going to take a little bit of this powder our eyes, so I'm just going to try and press it ever so lightly underneath my eyes. 
I used this once before and I noticed that it gives a really brightening effect. And then I'm just gonna go in with my Essence All About Matte Translucent Powder. We're just gonna take a little bit. I don't think we really need to set too much just because I do feel like we're extremely matte, but because we're gonna apply powder on top later, we'll just apply a little bit. All right, so now I'm just gonna quickly do my brows. I'm just gonna speed up this process. I've been using these same brow products for the longest time. I have switched out my brow powder from the Anastasia one. That's the one that I was using all the time previously, but I thought it was time to switch it up, but I'll leave all of my brow products that I'm using in my description box. If you follow my project pen, it is the same. All right, so the brows are on, my eyes are primed. We're gonna move into eyeshadow now. And there were a couple of options that I could have picked out because there are a lot of palettes that I do love, but I decided to go with the ColourPop Double Entendre palette. This palette is now discontinued, I believe, but this used to be my favorite for many, many years. So this was in my yearly favorites of 2017 and 2018, and I haven't used it in a while, so I thought I would whip it out today, even though it is discontinued, but I'm sure a lot of you guys do have this palette because it was one of ColourPop's like best palettes. So we're first going to go into to this shade here. This one is called Extra Curricular and I'm gonna use this as my transition shadow. I noticed that a lot of Colourpop's older palettes have now been discontinued like Give It To Me Straight for example which is another favorite. That's quite sad. I feel like the Double Tundra is a really great palette to have in their collection um, because it's a really great staple but I guess palettes like Nude Mood kind of have replace it in a sense. And we're also going to take this onto our lower lash line as well. And then I'm going to go into the shade right next to it called Hard. And we're just going to work this at the outer corners of our eyes. The reason why I love this palette so much um, is because of the variation of colors. I think it's a really great warm tone palette. It's like similar to the Nude Mood or I should say Nude Mood is similar to this where you get like the transitions, you get the highlights and you also get really good deeper tones so I feel like it's a really great warm tone palette to have. I just feel like Colourpop is just so different these days like with their concepts and like collections and how frequently they would um, release which you know is all good and it's fun but I feel like when a brand releases something just like every now and again you get much more excited I think when a brand releases too much it's hard to be excited for every single collection you know like brands like M Cosmetics, Kaleidos, when they release something I'm so hyped. They release something like every season I would say which I think gives them more time to really think about the product they're going to be releasing. Not that Colourpop doesn't put thought into it it's like because they have a lot of details into their collections for sure. I don't know it's just I don't know it's just different from when I first used to review Colourpop like my excitement not that I'm not excited, <laughs> I am, but I'm not as excited as I used to be when I used to review Colourpop. Because for this video, I had to look back at my older videos, and it was just actually quite nice to go back to my older videos. Um, when I was looking at my 2017 favorites, so four years ago, in the caption it says, thank you for 25k, and I'm just like, wow. 25k four years ago. I really... it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey. And I was really just at a different place. I was living somewhere else. Like, yeah, a lot has changed for sure. I'm gonna take that same shade onto my lower lash line as well. All right, now I'm gonna go into this shade here called Draft. And we're gonna apply that to the inner third of our eyes. This is a really nice like coppery, bronze type of tone. I will go in with this shade called Keep It PG, a metallic light gold, and we'll use this to highlight our inner corners. 
Alrighty, I'm gonna go into this shade called Teddy Bear, the darkest brown. And we are gonna use this as our winged eyeliner for today because the eyeliner that I used to love was the Inglot uh, Gel Eyeliner. And that is still a really great eyeliner, but I realized that Inglot is not cruelty free. I'm not sure why I thought they were. Um, but they're actually not, so I did stop buying it. And I actually have converted to brush tip eyeliners now. And now I'm just going to go ahead and tight line with my Artisee in Moister Eyeliner, which has been a favorite since I think 2017. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and curl my lashes to get them ready for mascara and falsies. I think I've been using this lash curler since 2017. <laughs> I haven't changed it. I've been meaning to. I just don't know which curler to get. So if you guys have any recommendations, let me know because I think it's definitely time to change. So for mascara, I'm going to be going in with the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. I used to be obsessed with this and actually I was so obsessed that my friend actually gave me her one. Because um, based off my recommendation, she got it but she didn't actually like it. So she gave me her one. So I've had this in my collection for a while. I'm surprised it's not dried out. So hopefully it still works well. But this is the only mascara that I have in my collection that was an old favorite. Again, mascara is not a thing that I have multiple of. I'll buy one, I'll use it up, and then I'll buy a new one. I don't usually have a lot on hand, um, but we're gonna just coat our lashes with this. Okay, I think it is a little dried out, but that's okay. Sometimes when a mascara is a little bit more dried out, I actually like it a little bit more than when it's like really new and fresh. Okay, it really thickens. Kind of like better than six vibes. Like very clumpy, which I love. <laughs> I like it. Still like it. Would I repurchase it? Probably no. And for my lashes, I'm going to be applying the Bedore Lights from House of Lashes. Their light collection has been a favorite of mine, again, for so many years. I think I've mentioned in every single favorites that I've done yearly favorites. I think 2017, 18, 19, and 20. It's just... What can I say? It's been one of my favorites for a very, very long time. So now back onto the face, we're going to work on the cheeks. So for my bronzer, I have the NYX Cosmetics uh, Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. This was the only thing that I used to use. I realized in my collection, I don't have a lot of good staple bronzers. I think it's very hard to find a good bronzer for some reason, but this was a palette that I would use all the time. I think in 2018 and 2019, this was in my yearly favorite. I mainly used uh, this one here when I wanted something warmer and I would use this one for my nose contour. So it's been a long time since I've used this because I'm using my Kaleido one and I just felt like I was using this so much that you know it got repetitive and this one I'm actually almost hitting pat on it because I can see the ring on it we'll go in with the warm bronzer since today's eye look is quite warm and then I'm gonna apply it here oh I, I took way too much this is so dark Oh my gosh, this is so dark. But it does blend out really well, so that's good. We can make this work, guys. <laughs> I think back then I was a lot tanner as well. But yeah, this is a really good like contouring palette. I'm just gonna go over with my sponge. So hopefully tone that down a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and take this shade for 
my nose contour. And this one also has a little bit of a dent in it as well. I used to use this all the time, but I never really use any of these. It was just mainly for the contour because I like the variation. I like how I could mix and match. Um, so I'm going to take some on the back of my hand because we don't want to, we don't want too much pigment, I feel. So just going down the side of my nose. Alright, so for blush, I'm going to be taking this one from Colourpop in the shade Weirdo. I used to use a lot of their single press blushes because I have like this little palette. Um, and Weirdo was one that I use all the time. 2 the 10 was another one. There was another one that I used to use, but I can't remember the name. But Weirdo was a popular favourite. So I'm just going to apply that to the apples on my cheeks. Yep, and it still is a beautiful shade. I love it. Really great everyday pinky blush. Okay guys, for highlighter, if you have been with me since 2017, I have not stopped talking about this highlight. I have recently because it is discontinued and also... Uh, I'm not into like super super intense highlighters, but the Colourpop in New Window palette, I don't know why they discontinued this, it was such a good one. Even if they did discontinue this palette, I wish they would just bring out the individual pans because look, I hit pan. I hit pan on one of the highlighters, okay? I recently hit pan on my highlighter Fuego um, that's in my project pan really recently, but I forgot I hit pan on this one. This would have been the first highlighter that I hit pan on, and this is like a really good dupe for the Anastasia Nicole Guerrero palette, but this one is better. I feel like Nicole's palette is very glittery, which, you know, there's a time and place for that, but this one, as you can tell, I really love. I loved the gold shade um, for a warm tone look like this. I would use this one when I'm doing more cool tone looks. And then this um, more rose coppery one when I do like pink yellow looks, you know? There was just a little something of everything in this palette and I really loved it. And on the loose, the gold one, so good, duh, because I hit pan on it. Ugh, it's so satisfying. Maybe I should add this one into my project pan next after my Fuego one. But that will be a long time away. So these are very intense, so... And we're gonna use like circular motions to buff that in. This is a very... 2017 highlight for me. 2016, 15, you know. But it still looks good. I still really like it. But it is very intense. Like I need my sponge to dab that into the skin. But it is really nice. It like sits really well on the skin. And lastly, onto the lips. I recently just uploaded discontinued products that I wish would come back. And I don't know why I did not mention this because this is also a product that I wish that would just come back. Um, and this is from Urban Decay. It's their Revolution glosses. And I have mine in the shade Kinky. So I'm gonna put this on for a quick second just to show you because I'm pretty sure this is expired. This was in my favorites in 2017 and I don't know why I didn't mention it in my 2018-19 because it's a gloss that I have kept in my top drawer since 2017. I just don't use it as much. I don't know why. But everything about this gloss I really love. I love the packaging. I love the applicator. And I remember I got this when we went to Australia and it was just a very fun trip. I got it at Duty Free. So yeah, maybe after this I'll declutter it because it's it's gone bad. So I'm going to put it on very quickly just so I don't irritate my lips. Did it used to smell like this? I don't know. Anyway, we'll apply this. Let's hope it's still as great as it used to be. Oh yeah, that's still really good. So it is an opaque gloss. But it's not like too sticky. I don't know why I'm trying to describe this product to you because you can't buy it anymore. It used to be my favorite. But this is really my type of gloss. I love a gloss that you can wear on its own where it's very opaque. So I, actually I might leave it on for the final look, you know? 
I don't feel like my lips are feeling irritated. I will take it off after I finish filming for sure. Alright guys, so this is the final look using some of my old favorites. I really love how the look turned out and I still love all of the products that I showed in today's video. These are still some of my favorite products for sure, even if I haven't used them for a little bit. Um, and I would highly recommend everything if you are able to get them because I know a lot has been discontinued. But I had a lot of fun filming today's video and just going down memory lane like watching my old videos which is something that I don't like to do. I don't even like watching videos from like even last year or even last month because I feel like I'm always changing my styles changing and maybe I don't like my hair or whatever or the way I spoke. I think it's really fun to look back and see how far you come you know with the growth of my channel and also my makeup and also in my personal life and just seeing where I was at that time and where I am now and it's just like you know it's like n nostalgia and I know a lot of you guys have been with me for a very long time which is very very sweet and I just you know really appreciate it thank you guys so much for watching truly if you guys did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up it does help my videos out a lot as well and with that being said I will see you guys in my next video love you bye